equals 21.12. 21.12. Now, we've got this last cell, 22 times 10 divided by 250. 22, whoops, times 10 divided by 250. And that's 0.88. Now, I'll actually point something out. Uh, I'll note that the difference here between the uh, the observed of 5 and the expected of 0.88 seems pretty different. There seems to be a pretty big difference there. And the question in the 2 by 2 contingency table analysis is, well, are these deviations between observed and expected sufficient, sufficiently large as to have confidence that it's not simply due to chance that we're seeing some differences? That's the crux of the 2 by 2 table analysis. I'll note that these calculations um, can be performed in a spreadsheet that I created that's online. I'll just point this out very briefly and I'll, I'll add a link to the summary of this video uh, in the description of this video uh, that uh, you just have to add these numbers in and it does all the calculations for you automatically. It even calculates the chi-square value, calculates all the extra calculations that I'm going to show in the next slide and then it calculates the chi-square value, and it calculates the phi, which I'm not going to talk about in this in this uh, presentation. But then not only that, but it even it even does a little write-up for you with the uh, numbers included in the um, write-up. So it's something that you can check your analyses and your write-up for verification if you're doing a report of some sort. Um, okay, so now we need to calculate the differences between the observed and expected frequencies. In this case, you might remember that right-handers who did not have dyslexia, there were 223 of them. But the expected value was 218.88. Now I'm going to square that difference and then divide by the expected value. You might see this more in a formula format like this, but I couldn't uh, do that in an easy way uh, in the spreadsheet I created on the interactive website. Uh, so I just created it uh, in a more simple way. But that's the same, the same thing. 223 minus 218 squared divided by 218. Okay? Now, I'll just point out quickly where I got those numbers. It's the observed cell, 20, 223, minus the expected cell, and then it's divided by the expected cell. Okay? So 223 minus 218.88 squared, the difference squared, divided by 218 gives you 0 0.08. Now for the other cells, 17 minus 22.12 divided by 221.12, Now for uh, right for um, right-handers, actually let me check, 5 and 9, that's where I'm getting these values. The observed right-handers who do have dyslexia. Right-handers who are expected to have dyslexia is 9, but it's only observed at 5. Okay, so that's where I got those numbers, 9 minus 9.12 squared divided by the expected frequency, 1.86. Now for the final one, 5 minus 0.88 squared divided by 0.88 gives a whopping 19.28. Where'd I get those numbers? the observed cell frequency minus its corresponding expected cell frequency squared and then divided by the expected cell frequency. So then we get 19.28. Now to get the Pearson chi-square value, there's only one step left really in the calculations. We simply have to sum these four values and that gives 22.02. That's the Pearson chi-square value in this 2 by 2 table analysis. Now in the last step, we simply have to compare our obtained Pearson chi-square value against the critical chi-square value, which in a 2 by 2 table analysis, an alpha set at 0 0.05, which most people set alpha at, the critical chi-square value is always going to be 3.84 with one degree of freedom. And in this case, we've got a Pearson chi-square value of 22.02, which exceeds 3.84, and therefore I reject the null hypothesis of no association. There does appear to be an association between being left-handed 
and having dyslexia. Stated alternatively, there seems to be a disproportionate number of people who are diagnosed with dyslexia and are also left-handed. That's what the Pearson chi-square analysis is telling us. 22 is greater than 3.84. Uh, now, just uh, before I conclude, I'll point out that this spreadsheet that I created does this all interactively. You just have to type in your numbers here, and then it changes. It calculates all, all the expected cell frequencies, and then the calculations, the difference between the expected and the observed, and then it calculates the, the uh, chi-square value, calculates phi, which I didn't talk about, and then it writes up a little report. Does a little write-up for you. All right, I hope you found this useful, and I'll catch you next time.